Watch OS 10 is finally here and it's the biggest Apple Watch update yet. However, with so many changes and tweaks, you may be confused because so many features have been remapped, rethought, and redesigned. So let me guide you through Watch OS 10 with these 10 simple tips and tricks. And that all starts with relearning the digital crown with Apple's new smart stack feature. To find this completely new view, all you have to do is rotate the digital crown or swipe up from the bottom of your watch face. In this new view, you'll now see the date and time, as well as a whole stack of widgets that you can scroll through to get access to detailed rich information like your move ring, weather, calendar appointments, and more. Now, of course, Apple will give you some default widgets and they'll actually surface relevant widgets like the now playing screen when you're playing media, so you can get quick access to controls. But if you want to tailor make this area for yourself, all you have to do is long press on the screen to add your own widgets. And then you'll see a plus sign in the top left corner. You can press that, and then you can see all the widgets that are available to place in this view. And you can add up to eight of your own widgets in the screen before they max out. Now, while this widget area is helpful, it can get disorganized, especially with Apple trying to show you relevant widgets when they think you want to see them. So what you need to do next is to pin your favorite widgets. To do this, simply long press to edit your widgets, and then in the top right corner of the widget, you'll see this little pin icon. Simply tap that icon to pin a widget so it always shows up at the top of your stack. And of course, if you want to unpin the widget, simply tap this icon and it's unpinned. Now with this new widget mode, you might have wondered, did Apple get rid of the Apple Watch dock feature that had your recently used apps? Well, they actually didn't, but this is a really hidden feature that I don't see too many people talking about. So to access your dock or your recently opened apps, what you have to do now is double press on the digital crown. Once you do this, this will bring up a list of your recently opened apps. And instead of starting at the top and then you scroll down, they now start at the bottom and then you scroll up to see older apps. Now, if you ever want to quit out of an app, especially if it freezes or you have some other issues with it, well, you can also force restart an app from this view. Simply slide the app to the left and you'll now see a red X to close out your Apple Watch apps. This is a very similar concept to closing apps on your iPhone by swiping up and then closing them. Now with these remapped controls, the big question is, what happened to Control Center? You used to access Control Center by swiping up from your Apple Watch. Well, now that has been remapped to the side button. So to access Control Center, all you have to do is press the side button. And here you can get quick access to controls like your cellular connectivity, your Wi-Fi, your battery percentage, do not disturb, theater mode, and more. Now, of course, one thing everyone loves with the new Watch OS update is new Apple Watch faces, because this can really change not only the way our watches look, but also how we use our watch. And watch OS 10 comes with more faces than was actually originally promised. So now you have this new Nike Globe watch face, the Solar Analog watch face, and the other two Apple Watch faces that Apple already announced, the Snoopy and the Palette watch face that were announced at WWDC 2023. On top of that, if you're lucky enough to own an Apple Watch Ultra, you also get access to an exclusive new watch face called Modular Ultra. And this is one of the most information dense watch faces that the Apple Watch offers. And it offers a lot of customization with a ton of complications and even the ability to customize the bezel with seconds, elevation, or water depth, as well as customizing the digital time size. And it even includes an auto night mode, which I think looks really cool. I really like this watch face. It has a ton of information on it. And I kind of feel like I'm in the special ops when I wear this. Like I have all the information available to me on my wrist at a glance. So, you know, don't, don't mess with me because I got the data. Now, I don't know about you, but I am always losing my iPhone, which is why I love the ping feature found on the Apple Watch. However, there are a few times where I've actually misplaced my watch and thought, well, why can't I ping my Apple Watch from my iPhone? Now, one of my favorite tips for the new Apple Watch is the ability to ping it from your iPhone. Obviously, you need an iPhone to do this, but to own an Apple Watch, you gotta own an iPhone. So I, I consider this also an Apple Watch tip. So to do this, go to settings, scroll down to control center, and then from the more controls list, tap the plus button to add ping my watch to your iPhone's control center. Then if you misplace your watch, just swipe from the top right of your iPhone's display and you can now see the ping Apple Watch icon. Just tap that and you'll hear this sound play out on your Apple Watch. Finally, it's not often I need to use this feature, but when I do, it's a time saver instead of spending 10 minutes hunting it down. Now, one of the headline features for the Apple Watch Series 9 is a new pinch to tap gesture. Apparently, this will be an exclusive feature to the Apple Watch Series 9 and it will not be coming to older Apple Watches. However, 
What if I told you there was already a way to do this on your current Apple Watch? Well, there kind of is by using the Apple Watch's accessibility features. To do this, go to Settings, scroll down to Accessibility, and then scroll down to the Assistive Touch setting. Then turn on Assistive Touch. From here, you have a lot of gestures you can now use. You can customize these any way you want, but I prefer to set the pinch as a tap, the double pinch as a way to move forward, and the clenching your fist motion as a way to move backwards, with a double clench bringing up the action menu. I also scroll down and set the activation gesture, and I set this to a double pinch because I find that easier than the double clench gesture. Now go back to your watch face and simply double pinch to go into this mode when you want to control your watch hands free. So now when I pinch, I can move forward on the Apple Watch's user interface. When I get to a selection that I want, I can double pinch to tap, and then I can pinch again to scroll or move forward. If I want to move backwards, I can then clench my fist to move backwards. Now, honestly, I think there's a big learning curve with these gestures. It takes a while to get used to, especially if you don't use them all the time. And honestly, it does not look as refined as what is promised on the Series 9 gestures. But if you want a way to do this right now, that Series 9 gesture isn't even coming out until October, this is currently your best option and again, it works on older Apple Watches as well. Now let me take it back to the smart stack because there's also a new way in watchOS 10 to pin three of your favorite apps. All you have to do is scroll on the digital crown or swipe up from the Apple Watch face, then scroll to the bottom of your widgets view. Here you will see a set of three apps, and of course you can tap on them to quickly jump into that app. But you can also long press to edit this view and then pick which apps you want here. So you can tap to remove this app and then Hit the plus sign so you can put your own app in here. And again, this is just another way to pin frequently used apps and shortcuts to your Apple Watch's interface. Finally, in watchOS 10, this last tip is to actually just explore all the new user interface options and get used to some of the new design language in watchOS 10. Nearly every app in watchOS 10 from Apple has been completely redesigned to take advantage of the larger Apple Watch displays, with each app getting a lot of feature-rich details. A lot of apps have also been redesigned with a similar look to how your watch faces already look and work, with settings and menu changes being placed in the corner of apps rather than being buried as additional options that used to only surface when you long pressed on the Apple Watch's face. This results in even more discoverability for setting changes for normal users and overall just makes better use of the larger displays found on modern Apple Watches, and the visual rehaul just looks a lot nicer. But those are my watchOS 10 tips and tricks. Please let me know in the comments below what was your favorite tip or trick or new feature. And as always, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to leave me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.